yesterday class was only about uh, the making a background for you in software test in agile and today how it is relevant from software testing perspective as a software tester what you are supposed to do we will talk about those terms correct so few approach which is required whenever you do the software testing uh, do you have any any doubt in yesterday class any of you like who have joined yesterday no okay okay Hello, so uh, okay okay thank you so today let's talk about those approach which we follow the one is your whole team approach whole team approach means that uh, either i am working as a individual contributor in the team right but whenever we talk about and we are just following the scrum right so we are making the base of scrum because majority of the company follow the scrum so we will talk about uh, we are taking a base as a scrum and we will talk in that reference so in scrum it is very important we should consider it as a team right not as an individual contributor like in previous class we have seen and if anyone has not seen the previous class or not uh, was not there i will share the recording on youtube you can go and check so uh, as a team what should be the motivation and whenever in scrum we say we never say that uh, it is i have done or it is this sprint or this release is successful because of me or this was delay or this was not a good quality release because of me it is a complete team effort right it is a kind of you can say win win situation for everyone so like here uh, like it is mentioned here someone has chat or what like it is mentioned here the whole team approach means involving everyone with knowledge and skill which is necessary to ensure the project success and that is the reason as a scrum master if you are working your one objective is that your team should be cross functional anyone can uh, can tell me what is a cross functional anyone can help me what is cross functional uh, we can check multiple browsers uh, uh, at a time for the same functionality okay anyone else <laughs> I mean, uh, the individual should be able to pitch into any roles, uh, be it like unit testing developer or uh, a testing or documentation. So Absolutely. it should be. Absolutely. So cross-functional means you should not have a dependency on a on uh, on a particular person. Like for again, I'm not saying that it should be a uh, everyone should be expert on every skill, but at least they should aware about. For example, let's suppose we are at, right now we are nine people here, right? So it is not that uh, let's suppose tomorrow, uh, for example, uh, uh, Vipin is not coming to the office and Vipin has some job which is need to complete otherwise the rest of the team member or i have a dependency on vipin's task so if vipin is not coming i will sit ideal it should not be like that someone can assist someone can help to complete the task so that i can move on right something like that uh i am not sure if someone has switched on the video okay so the whole team approach if you talk about it is that everyone skill and knowledge is required in case if it is not uh, please keep yourself on mute so in case if it is not then your scrum master responsibility to upgrade either by providing the training or doing some internal kt sessions right the team includes representative from the customer and other business business stakeholder and the whole team approach is another benefit that it should not be having any kind of a dependency and making quality everyone's responsibility it is not that testers are responsible for the quality product it is also the business people if i am saying business or so product owner and also your developer as well if your product owner is not writing the acceptance criteria correctly you will not be able to write the good test cases if your product owner is not telling you what is the sprint goal then your team will lag somewhere if your team again if your development team is not writing the definition of ready then you will start you are doing the work which is half baked right if you are not agree or if you have not done the user story estimation or refinement you have not done correctly it is whole team responsibility correct 
Now, next, if I talk about early and frequent feedback, most of the time, like uh, if any of you uh, have done ISTTP, so in ISTTP, we study one concept that is of a, a static review. Why static review is important? Because most of the defect, and believe me, whenever at the time of user story refinement, that is a kind of a static testing from testing perspective, most of the defect has been found at early stages. Why? Let me, uh, there is a one very uh, beautiful concept. Let me show you something. Just allow me a minute. Right, if you will look at my screen, what is wrong here? The requirement has been given to you in your user story. It has been mentioned, have one trunk, have four legs, should carry both load and passenger and cargo, black in color, and it should be herbivorous. Now you, you or a development team has started working on requirement and you have provided this solution. The delivered item is having a trunk, four legs, carry both passenger and load, black in color, herbivorous, and you have provided one more feature, one more uh, uh, attribute, which is it is giving the milk. What is wrong in this? I mean, every requirement is fulfilling here. Where is the lagging? Any of you? In UI? Yes, UI, absolutely. So that this kind of a thing as a software tester, whenever we talk, Whenever we participate in user story refinement or whenever we participate in uh, sprint refinement, right? We should always talk, open and ask your question. That is very important. Otherwise, a wrong perception, you will make a wrong test cases. And believe me, most of the time it happens that during the refinement, you clear your doubt or the defect has been fixed at that time, which is not easily caught during your execution. So, and even also there is, if one graph, if I will draw like this, right, if defect and age, it usually goes like this, right? This is your time. This is your defect. So basically the defect, which is found at later of the stages is not easy to fix. It is complex and it takes a lot of money as well. The same they have mentioned here that early and free, frequent feedback is very important. Even though if you have started working on any user story, it doesn't mean that you cannot raise your question, right? You can always raise your question if you have any doubt. And that is the reason your daily scrum is there. Instead of making any assumption, inform it to your scrum master. And if it is required, call to your product owner in your daily scrum and resolve your query. So avoiding requirement misunderstood, which may not be having detected until, until later in the development, clarify the customer features request, making available for customer user early this way, put, put a better reflect, discovering via continuous integration, isolation, resolving quality problem, providing information to agility, productivity, ability to deliver and promoting consistent project movement. So one of the principle which we have studied yesterday, you should provide the early working solution on a frequent basis to your client. That is very much required. Any question, any doubt in two type of approach which we follow as a software testing professional? Any of you? No. Okay, now let's talk about, because most of the time, we have a confusion on user story, right? So yesterday we have seen few things. Let me open the notepad again, right? There was a vision and then it is broken into epic and this is broken into features. Feature. Then user Feature. stories and then in task, task. correct? Now, user story, you can say like one feature is, for example, uh, the similarly, like your test scenario, right? Then there is a test condition, then test case and test script. 
so you can correlate to the same concept here by understanding test case which cannot be broken further and if you have done istqp that is a concept given test scenario is you can say high level end to end uh, testing of any product similarly feature is having a multiple user stories like one feature is a payment gateway now payment gateway can be done with a multiple ways it could be your uh, uh, with upi with debit card credit card online internet banking with a scanner anything it can be done right now which one requirement you are picking which cannot be broken further so user story should be you can say lowest requirement which cannot be broken further and we try to keep it as less dependent as it can be and always user story should be slicing so i am not going to cover the slicing because that is a part by the product owner user stories should be slicing like for example if you guys are aware that uh, you um, uh, you eat cake right so in cake there are multiple layers some cream some bread some other items so you have to cut the cake vertically sliced so the person who is consuming the cake should be having flavor of each layer the similarly whenever the user story has been defined it should be having each flavor whether it should be having integration or it should be having ui it should be having a development and testing performance everything should be included in your user story the user story should be written by your product owner now whenever the user story has been written right whether it is kept in your product backlog or it is bought into your sprint backlog from product backlog to sprint backlog by the product owner as per their priority we should always do the user story refinement or we can say that's a user story estimation and during the sprint uh, backlog refinement we discuss about the user story about that how we are going to achieve the user story so guys again please remember there are two things one is a product backlog refinement and there is another one a sprint backlog refinement during the product backlog refinement your product owner tells that what the product owner is expecting to complete by this user story during a sprint backlog refinement you understand by doing the technical discussion that how it can be achieved right so now let's talk about the user story which is the granular level of uh, your requirement which consists of your both functional and non functional thing right in 90% cases your test cases are belonging to the acceptance criteria and if i say in any in any sprint right there is your definition of done which is known as dot definition of ready and acceptance criteria so definition of done should be written by your uh, sorry definition of it should go in this sequence definition of ready should be written by your development team which includes your developer your tester your, your ui your architect definition of done should be written by again development team but should be agreed or in consent with your product owner and acceptance criteria must be written by your product owner right now as a software tester now your developer know that what kind of a thing they are going to develop from the user story but how you will write the test case belonging to that particular user story so that is majorly based on your acceptance criteria right how you negotiate how you work we will discuss in upcoming slide that how you will ask multiple question from user story that we will see but one thing as a software tester you can include which is the acceptance criteria your acceptance criteria tells the functional non functional both the thing it could be your performance it could be your security compatibility any of the things or functional thing as well right and each user story should follow one concept which is known as your invest invest independent negotiable valuable estimatable and time frame right so here or testable whatever you want to say independent that each user story should like it's not like uh, they should be having some dependency on other user stories right you are uh, it should be having some value like we have seen whenever we deliver the item in sprint it should deliver some value to the customer it should add on some value like iterative and incremental if you guys remember yesterday we have discussed right so every user story whichever you are going to deliver should add some value to the customer right 
it should be estimate estimable which means you have a pre idea that how much time it is going to take to complete your user story it is not that and most important part is that for example you are taking a sprint of a two week in your scrum your user story should fit within the two week which means the development and other activities which is testing as well it is not that you have bought any user story which is of uh, developer is saying it will take at least 3 week to complete and you are you are trying to fit the user story in a sprint of a 2 week right in that case the product owner responsibility to break the user story into multiple other user story it should be small enough to fit in the sprint and it should be testable as well means you can create the test case belonging to the user story otherwise if no testing has been done believe me the quality issues will come or there could be a defect leakage that could be come right now let's talk about few other terms which are very important from testing perspective that what are the principles you need to follow as a software tester in your testing right okay but before that any uh, any question any doubt here anurag kiran अनदर किरण वेंकट मेघना पंकज सिद्धांत सिमरन विपिन एनी क्वेश्चन गाइस आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क वन क्वेश्चन हम्म यस्टरडे और टुडे बोथ कैन जस्ट वन क्वेश्चन द एस यू आर टीचिंग द ऑटोमेशन आर यू गोइंग टू कवर द नॉन फंक्शनल एज वेल और फॉर द वी विल बी एस ए फंक्शनल टेस्ट टेस्टर वी विल टेस्ट द इन ऑटोमेशन इट्स अ नेहा राइट Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, oh no problem. Just let me change your name. Yeah. So Neha, I mean, where the automation is come here? Yeah, because you said you user history is having both functional and non-functional. Hmm. So hmm. we as a automation, we are the functional tester or functional or non-functional. Really, I am always confused in this matter. Okay. So here, few people have done automation course. Like Anurag is here, Simran is here. They are the right person to answer your question. Anurag, please, can you answer? that you are a functional tester or non functional tester uh yeah hi it is actually i'm i'm i'm, I'm working in both in a functional non functional testing so okay. yeah okay simran if you can help okay i believe simran if you are speaking you are on mute but anyways anyone can help to answer this question what neha has asked that as a automation we are a functional or non functional tester as non functional requirement function comes when per performance and security correct cases. correct yes. so absolutely so, functional yeah so neha i don't think automation is some in anywhere related to with the functional or non functional right because if i am saying automation it covers your uh, selenium it covers your j meter as well right so uh, if i am talking about automation so it covers your uh, rp as well which is again you are automating your test case or automating any business process again i might be incorrect if anyone is here please correct me but automation tester is working from both side as a manual tester also you work from the both side functional and non functional because as a manual tester you not only check the functionality you also take test some other things like uh, some sql injection you also check as a manual tester you also check what is the performance what is the latency issue how much time any uh, this functionality is consuming the memory lot of things you do as a manual tester as well right so testing is functional non functional is a different scenario automation and manual is a different scenario we cannot say that i am a manual tester then i am a only functional tester right i am a business tester we will cover this topic no worries uh, in upcoming uh, okay, slide i have here many people they are confused and they say you know just say i am functional tester and in the interview they ask both things i mean people also say we are a qa guys and as per istq there is no word which we use as a qa if you, if anyone have joined my istq class i have clearly said that there is no word qa we should use it but still we use as a qa Right, hey, which is not a right. Most of the word. jobs they they written down the QA tester. Yeah, absolutely, they do. Right, even people believe that there is no Scrum master should be there or your project manager should play a role of a Scrum master. Still, I mean, in in the market, people say there should be technical Scrum master. I'm seriously surprised. What is a technical Scrum master? So in market, what is going on? I cannot comment. 
right mm -hmm. ideally there is no technical scrum master either you can be a scrum master or you can be a technical architect exactly right it is coming is happening with most of the projects you are yeah it is it is i agree so as a software tester right and i never use believe me i never use a word of a queue i always say it's a software tester so as a software tester there should be 10 principles which you should follow right one is absolutely the agile values and the principles now yesterday we have seen there were four values and 12 principles if you will recall them believe me your way of writing the test case your way of doing the testing will change absolutely it is if you will correlate provide continuous feedback if you are stuck at some point of time you believe that this is not going in a right way you must have a courage to speak up as a software tester if someone is asking that uh, give a sign off forcefully you can raise your hand and you can simply deny it because in a scrum whenever we follow people cannot be forced right we always follow the process we don't follow the people even if your senior leadership is coming and forcing in a daily scrum that why this has not been finished it is absolutely against with the scrum process that is the reason in the scrum if you have seen there are three types of a role scrum master product owner and development team there is no any another role there is no kind of a manager no leadership is there yes absolutely scrum master represent the team to the leadership but ideally your leadership should not come and intervene in the team right you should keep it simple like like one of the i believe uh, tenth principle which you have seen that making it simple don't make your task complex right don't focus on writing number of test cases but your focus should be deliver the quality product right practice continuous improvement which you can follow during your retrospective what kind of a feedback you are collecting create or make some kind of a care analysis which is cas uh, casual analysis and resolution creates that kind of a diagram right evaluate yourself how you can make a better approach how you can write a good number of test cases how you can collaborate with your team member how you can do the peer to peer testing right which is very important after apart from that you have an opportunity to add the value what is the meaning of adding the value you can recommend something it is not that you got the user story you start writing the test case done the execution came, came out from the office my work is done because i got my salary no absolutely not you should add some value to the organization right how you have helped your team member to complete the task any kind of uh, improvement like you have reduced the dependency on uh, on the documentation right you have created some kind of a jira board where people can go and uh, do the refer every time they need not to uh, just consult with someone create or add some value to the organization right for example uh, most of the time like in a testing we guys we always do the testing on uh, uh some uh, simulation environment where the ids or username has been created for uh, as a dummy account right uh, like i share one example with you when i was working with one of the uh, major bank in, uh, in my organization so uh, in two week of a sprint what they were doing that uh, they were giving one dummy account and that has a validity for three days now my team started working on three days after three days it got expired because of the security reason and then next day we have to again come back and raise the issue, raise the ticket and it takes approximately one day to uh, uh, get the approval and everything and then after fourth day the the fifth day the ticket uh, closed and we got another account so what was happening during one sprint of a two week we were losing two days two or three days we were losing one tester has recommended that sir why not we are using any kind of outlook reminder very simple thing but innovative which has saved the time why not uh, you just uh, uh, just mark as a reminder in your outlook on second day it can give you some pop up that uh, please raise a ticket for a new user account we started doing that and we save our 3 days in a sprint so that kind of a extra thing what you are value what kind of a value addition you are doing for for your team that is very important right now 
the next is now neha your question is answered here in your traditional approach whenever we talk about your functional team your tester is different your business analysis is different your programmer is different but when we talk about software agile tester it is a combination of all whether the person should be having i'm not saying should be a programmer but at least can understand the programming right by looking at the code can understand what is written there at least simple in simple english language the person can understand should be domain expert as well that is what expected from software tester in your agile domain or in your agile right so here we call you can call it as a functional non functional any kind of a tester but should be combination of that right now whenever there is a project initiation right whenever there is a uh, backlog refinement sometimes it happens that during the sprint you have completed your task and you find that you don't have any work in that duration you go back and check the product backlog item and try to understand what project is saying you understand what kind of a release plan is there like uh, you participate in your story estimation as well right you in every sprint or every iteration not only uh do the estimation as well but also you write and execute the user story pair test with other tester right developer with business validation automate the new functional test case run automate regression test set test case run project load test demo to the stakeholder most of the time it has been found that uh, developer comes and do the demo in your sprint review session right or in your sprint review uh, event as a software tester you take a step right you just showcase because there usually you have to showcase the functionality how this function is running what it was written in user story that has been achieved by this uh, user story or not right by uh, by doing the demo you can do it correct so you need not to showcase how it was written but you have to showcase what front end is working you can be initiator right you can take a initiative and participate in that right then once your testing has been done right as a good software tester what is supposed to do for example let me show you here let's suppose you have few sprints are here correct let's suppose you have three sprint one two and three correct now once you will complete your sprint one you should save some time for yourself for your team also which you can discuss with your scrum master whenever your scrum master does uh, capacity planning so you should inform it and your product owner as well to create one user story for a testing or you can whenever you give the estimation for each user story by creating the task because user story are never estimated on the number of hours but the task which is associated with particular user story are stamped with the number of hours so whenever you create the task put some extra hours on that right and inform it to scrum master now i am telling you why you should do it as a software tester once your sprint one has been completed do some regression for this right whether it is automate manual doesn't i am not going on that once your sprint two has been completed do the regression here for this right and then do the regression for integration of sprint 1 and sprint 2 once your sprint 3 has been completed do the regression for this right and then do the integration of sprint 2 and sprint 3 and then finally all the features all the user story which has been delivered previously in sprint 1 2 and 3 do your regression testing here this is a best approach for software tester in most of the time software tester what they do that they do the integration testing for sprint 1 they do the integration for sprint 2 do the integration testing for 3 and once they are going to release then they combine all the features all the user story and do the testing during the release which is i usually do not recommend as a different way how you can approach it you can follow this kind of a concept which will because why i am saying this because let's suppose if there is any defect coming between uh, the feature or user story between 2 and 3 you will catch it here if let's suppose any defect is coming here you will not be able to understand because of what integration because now you are doing the integration testing so you will not be able to understand 
this defect is coming because of any user story which was written in one or two or in three because now it is a complete integration but here it is very easy to call that is why you should make sure that you should you have to give the time to yourself to include the regression in your testing in your agile as well the same thing i mentioned the release management task mock deploy and staging is smoke test perform load testing if it is required complete the regression test business tester if they are they perform the uat and participate in your release readiness and whenever you go for the product support or release right so participate in release to production and participate in retrospective as well right which is very important any question any doubt here on this slide any of you okay now next is what is agile testing quadrant now guys it is very important because it is containing the hybrid combination between automation and manual as a manual tester whenever you write your test case right you should do the exploratory testing you should do the scenario based testing and usability usability how user is going to use this application the best way to write any of the test case what user is going to use this application one very good example i use in my uh, class let's suppose you are a you are a school going kid right and you have given some command to your printer and suddenly there is a one uh, uh, java null point error is coming pop up right that is a one scenario in second scenario you have given the print command and what happened that uh, the pop up came error message that your your printout has not been come out because of the following reason please check printer cartridge is, is not empty paper tray is not empty paper jam is not there printer driver is installed printer is connected correctly so there are two scenarios which one do you think is a good one as a as a school going kid any of you i mean any of you which scenario is good here the java null point error or the error with the steps hello error with the steps error with the steps right so you how you can make your test cases which is more user prone uh, or you can say more usability testing participate in uat as well right as a uat it is recommended that your business user should do the uat but you can also participate in that right now as a automation tester which is again combination automation and manual so you are at work as a functional tester a story tester prototyping which is you create some kind of a simulation as a automation tester it is your unit component and integration as well and as a with what kind of a tool which you use so for any of the non performance testing and also you use for agile supporting kind of a tool which is your jira where you write your manual test cases or if you are using hp alm which is again a, a test management tool or you can use any of the tool which is supporting for your jira plus testing activities right so basically as a software tester if you are working as a manual what kind of a test case you need to write if you are working as a automation and manual tester where you need to focus like in a regression plus functional and non functional if you are working completely into automation then which kind of a test case you need to write this is basically a clear difference that a business right supporting the team and technology right and this is the agile testing quadrant now if i talk about let's go on a very good concept here what kind of a question you need to ask from your product owner whenever there is a user story refinement session right whether it is a product backlog refinement or a sprint backlog refinement so what kind of a question you can ask from your pa now one user story and there is always a format of writing user story like as a user i want to do this so that i can achieve this in a similar way it is written here like let's suppose there is a one e-commerce website and one user story written by your product owner that as a shopper on our side i want to delete item out of my shopping cart so i do not purchase extra item that i deleted that i decide i do not want this is the kind of a user story which has been written now i want each one of you 
participate and let's suppose i am a product owner so what kind of a question you guys will ask for me on this user story anra kiran venkat meghna neha pankaj simran vipin just speak up guys otherwise how you will uh, learn the concept let's suppose this is a refinement session is going on i am your product owner i have proposed this user story as a software tester what questions you guys are going to ask for me a list of items to be deleted okay okay what else go ahead what are all other, uh, options uh, which we user can use to delete the items or okay like different locations where that option should be displayed okay it's cart to move to wish uh, wish letter okay can ask the technicality it is like is it going to be a soft delete or hard delete okay and okay. should there be any pop up message for confirmation okay okay and good shall we have the bulk delete options okay delete okay. multiple Very products mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there should be a, a customer id also which we should mention for deletion okay okay so guys here please try to understand why we are asking this question so to make our concept right which is very important now let's see how usually any question has been asked by your this is a kind of a some theoretical question which i have written i mean i usually have found so on the basis of my experience i have written few uh, just try to make it in a theory way so your product owner says we just want to make some easy of for the easy way of user to delete item but we do not have any specific implementation i don't know how you guys are going to implement it as a software tester the same question which has been asked in this for a few minute few seconds before should they be able to delete several item at once then i will say oh yes we can make it possible what if they accidentally delete item but they want to purchase it or they want to buy it? is there any some way that deleted item can be safe for lateral uh, re re retrieval i will ask this question from you then programmer will intervene yes that could be possible you as a software tester can ask last release we implemented as a wish feature here like in your amazon you find that you just save it for later do we have this kind of a functionality we are also going to introduce right product owner says yes there are two more stories which i want for sure i will write them i mean again guys please realize this just a moment just analyze this statement correct this is nothing but a recommendation you as a software tester has given idea to your product owner and product owner said yes absolutely this is a good idea i will write two more user stories which is which we are going to implement what worst thing this could be happen with this feature right you have also opened the risky area of this user story what if this is not going to follow what kind of a priority are you looking for let's suppose this functionality is not going to work what kind of a impediment or what kind of a impact do you believe it should be such kind of a questions you need to ask from your product owner to clear your concept about any user story right any any question any doubt here i mean you guys have asked very good questions but few a few of them i have compiled here any any doubt how we can ask the question whenever the user story refinement is there any of you okay i believe no now let's do the same thing in a different user story as a customer i want to know how much order cost will ship based on the shipping speed i choose so that i can choose a different shipping speed if i want to right as a software tester you can ask a question what are the shipping speed for the user can choose the duration the programmer can suggest something then your product owner will discuss something and tester can ask we will be using big express shipping to api calculate cost based the weight and destination right so again recommendation can we use this do you think uh, this kind of uh, api is going to work here then your programmer 
will say, yeah, it could be easy. We can implement it. Then you both as a tester and as a programmer will recommend to your product owner if we are going to use this API. This is going to take at least three to four hours or how many days? I don't know exactly how much time it is going to take to implement. You can propose this to your product owner, right? So it is not only the recommendation. It is not only understanding and asking the question. It is also to give the estimate about the user story, right? This kind of a discussion we do whenever the, there is a user story refinement, right? Now, the next approach which we follow is, so here I believe, now there are a uh, few more things are here. So one approach which we follow in your testing, like there is a TDD approach, there is a ATDD, there is a BTD approach which we follow in the testing whenever we work as a agile software tester. So what is a TDD approach? TDD approach is nothing but it is always with the automated test cases and majority it is followed by your developer. Now, if any user story come to develop, right, which has definition of ready and done acceptance criteria, everything has been written and accepted by your developer. What they do that they first test, right, with some uh, small piece of code and they try to find out the defect in that. They fix the defect and they do it till the time that de no defect is coming. And then once the defect are not coming, they just mark it as a done and pass it to the to the tester and tester do the testing. Now, one question can arise to you as a software tester, what I can contribute in this? Because this is the framework uh, which is followed by your uh, by the developer. Yes, you can also contribute. You can do here the peer programming. Now, developer are finding the defect from technical perspective. You can include the domain perspective as well, right? It is not that uh, they are testing for the looping, testing for the uh, deadlock situation or uh, performance issues they are checking. You can also contribute as a business tester, right? As a business or as a domain expert, you can put your concept there. So if at initial stages, again, guys, remember one concept, early testing or early feedback is very important. The same concept which you can use here, right? So you can give, oh, this, you have uh, taken the interest calculation formula here. So uh, let's do one thing, implement it, and uh, let me check what you have done. Then and there you can check it. Instead of the use, the complete user story is coming to you for the testing, initially you have found the defect and that has been fixed. This will save a time. So here you can apply the concept of peer to, uh, peer programming, right? Which is one on one. The next concept, which is ATDD, which is your acceptance test driven development. Acceptance test driven is majority is used in your regression, right? Now ATDD, as I said, that your test cases should be written on acceptance criteria, which is written by your product owner. So it's a very simple. If you guys want, just read it. I am giving you thirty seconds to read it. If you have any question, please ask. I will explain. Any doubt, any question here? Any of you? Hello? No, sir. Okay. So basically acceptance test driven development, right? Uh, it allows you to quickly resolution of defect and validation of feature behavior, right? And it could be your uh, uh, functional plus non-functional both and that clearly mentioned in your user story guys please note one thing which is very important for particular sprint your definition of ready and definition of done remains same but acceptance criteria changes as per user story for each user story the acceptance criteria is different like for example one user story where your product owner wants do some security testing in one user story do some uh, performance issues in one secure in one X user story your product owner wants to do some compatibility testing right so each user story have a different acceptance criteria and you need to include that acceptance criteria while writing your test case now how you are going to achieve 
might be some tools which are supporting your activities. Like there is a performance if I'm talking about so JMeter. If I say for uh, compatibility for security, some security, some Zap tools are there, which is used for compatibility. There are multiple tools which you can use. So again, in acceptance testing criteria, you have multiple ways to achieve the achieve the objective. Now the next, which is here, which is your BDD, which is your behavior driven development. Guys, again, ATDD or uh, ATDD or BDD, I'm not going in detail because that is a technical part. But yes, as a software tester, how you can achieve, we can discuss on that. So behavior driven is major, majorly it is, you can say on a functional side, which is you are given some initial context. When this event occur, then ensure some outcome is there, right? Now, BDD is, is, is basically the framework which generate the code that can be used by the developer to create the test case, right? And it help you, the developer, it helps the developer to collaborate with the stakeholder, including tester, to define the accurate unit test, focus on the business needs, right? Now, uh, I guess, Anurag, uh, in your class, the BDD framework has been covered uh, clearly, right? Please, can you help to other how the BDD has been done in automation? No, this BDD has not been, been covered in our course. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So BDD is basically nothing. It's a behavior-driven development. I mean, you write your test case according to the behavior of the field, like for enter button, whenever you do the automation, right? For uh, uh, for drop down, right? What should be the behavior? So basically, it is acceptance plus behavior of the field, which we write the test case. So basically, three ways of doing the testing or do, writing the test case: one, peer to peer, which is you follow during your TTD, that is uh, collaborate with your developer. Second is your ATDD, where you write the test case according to the acceptance criteria, and you use some tool. And behavior driven, you can say it's the functional majority in the functional, which covers your acceptance criteria plus other any uh, uh, testing like the integration as well, or uh, solely for particular functionality as well. Right. So three approach which we follow as a software testing in your agile. Now, what kind of skills we are looking as a software tester in agile? One, obviously, although we have seen the 10 principles, but uh, let's understand the concept here, the D positive solution oriented with team member and stakeholder. Display critical, quality oriented, skeptical thinking about product. Actively acquire information from a stakeholder. Accurately evaluate the report, test result, progress and product quality. Work effectively to define testable user story, especially this acceptance criteria with customer representative and a stakeholder. Collaborate within the team, working pair with the programmers and other team members. Respond to change quickly, including changing, adding or improving test case. Plan and organize your work accordingly. Because in Scrum, no one is going to ask you or force you that complete your task within this given time. Right? It is you who has to take ownership and complete the task as per your given time but it doesn't mean that you are taking enough time because other people are there who can intervene for example if i say to test the notepad i will take uh, 15 days to do the testing absolutely not right so whenever you are giving the estimation it should be ethical it should be within the given time frame or within the given time frame of a sprint right now here we uh, have understood the concept here now rest few more things which is covered here like uh, what should be the role of a tester in agile team one understand implement the updating test strategy ideally we don't write the test strategy but yes test plan has been written which is of a one pager not more than that measuring and reporting test coverage across all x applicable coverage dimension now how you can as a software tester make sure that your test cases are covering the all the requirements so do always do one thing whenever you write the test case always map your test case with your user story like in jira there is an option you can tag any of the jira item with any of or you can do the link is there and the same is applicable in any of the tool whichever you are using in your testing ensure proper use of a testing tool configure using the managing test environment and test data right so in whatever environment you are doing always make sure that the smoke and sanity has been done Right, reporting defect and working to the uh, team to resolve them, coaching the other team member in relevant to 
aspect of a testing. For example, if I am senior to my team, right? Any new person has joined. So I should always be helpful. Now here as a initiative, what I can take, I can create some document which can help the person to understand the project. Like uh, there is some checklist which I can create. If new onboarding is there, that kind of initiative you guys can take in your team, right? Create some document and uh, represent to your Scrum Master. That will be helpful for any of the any of the time if new person is onboarding. You have a checklist. You have the document for that person. Ensure the appropriate testing task to scheduling during the release and iteration planning. Actively collaborate with developer and business stakeholder. Make sure your the requirement or the user story on which you are working you have a clear idea on that it should not be happen that on just closing of a sprint like on 10th day on 6th on uh, 8th or 9th day you are coming and you are saying i couldn't understand the user story i am not able to uh, do the testing because i have not written the test case. test case you should be having courage to speak up that is one most important expectation from any person who is working into agile or in scrum participate proactively in team retrospective suggesting implementing and improvement one ceremony which we follow during your sprint that is your sprint retrospective which is the last activity in your sprint that is very much important why because you share your experience what went well what should continue which we need to improve right so you should always participate, give your feedback during the retrospective. Again, it should not be on a personal business, like, like uh, you are taking revenge to someone and bombarding to anyone. Please don't do that. Right? Now, if you have any question, please ask. So we can discuss here. Anurag, Kiran, Venkat, Meghna, Neha, Pankaj, Simran, Bipin. Is how important it is to attach any requirement documents like BRDs, FSDs, and uh, BRDs in user stories while declaring or uh, raising any user stories. Sorry, um, come again. I I couldn't get your question. Yeah, I mean, uh, how how important is this? To, uh, is it to attaching any BRDs or you know FSDs or any product requirement document to our user stories? I mean, is it totally uh, I mean optional or it is mandatory? It's a mandatory. One thing. Second thing, okay. it is not your task. Mm -hmm. It is your product owner's task. Whatever the wireframe, blueprint, any sketch, any diagram, any referential material, if you have asked, so you, it's the product owner's responsibility to attach with a user story. Otherwise, your concept will not clear for any user story. So if you need any requirement, if you need something more in detail for a particular user story, always raise this question to your business, uh, your product owner. They have to do this. Yeah. Any more question? If you have, uh, what will be the role of agile tester in a uh, Kanban uh, framework rather than the Scrum? Okay, so uh, Kiran, in Kanban, basically, uh, that doesn't work on uh, you can say time frame box. It is basically if I say it works on demand basis, right? So, for example. In Kanban, like there are multiple departments are there. One is, for example, in progress, I can say, right? This a task has not been uh, yet finalized, but something has to be mentioned here, right? Now, this task and every department work on a web concept, which is your work in progress, right? So, for example, let's suppose this is the development team. The web limit for this is seven, which means and seven is which I consider 70 members. Roughly, I am saying again, there is no thumb rule. So, but let's suppose seven tests, seven developers and seven tasks they can pick at any of the time. Correct. So, what will happen that any point of time there will be seven tasks that will keep in this department, and this team cannot pick any new task unless and until this task has not moved from this department to the next one. One thing. Second thing, if there is no task which is in ready condition. It is in progress. And this team has only six tasks is here, right? Let's suppose only six tasks is here, but no one is ready. So this team can sit ideal as well. Now, as a software tester, let's suppose this department is belonging to the QA. So 
the task which will be sent from this development team to this testing team will be on the basis of the priority and again there is a whip limit let's suppose the whip limit is five so the same concept applies here as well five tester can work simultaneously in a five different items one thing second thing in kanban there is no concept of daily scrum right because that is not required so people work according to the task assigned to them and then once it is completed they deliver it right there is no concept of a scrum master or product owner in kanban so people work according to their willingness and according to as per the task assigned to them right so as a software tester if you are working into a kanban one thing you should keep in mind that work on a priority queue right which is kept on your uh, department second work on a whip limit concept third if any any of the tasks which is assigned to is not clear to you you can raise the question to either to the developer that what exactly it is and yes since there is no product owner so sometimes your uh, management or any of the person can come there and resolve your uh, query but again there is no daily scrum so on the day of uh, finishing i mean let's suppose you are saying i will take three days to complete during any of the time you can ask this question right clear yes yes, yes it's clear thank you no problem any more question if you have yeah one question i would like mm -hmm. uh, yesterday as you said most of as you get most of the people they write the test cases directly but we shouldn't write the test cases directly. First, we should make the estimate in the diagram in technical. So really, I was uh, not on the desk, so I couldn't ask. What is the mean of that? Okay, so uh, it's not about only writing the test case, but it, you should not uh, starting your development as well. Once the estimation has been done, and basically we follow few technique while estimating our user story one is fibonacci another one is your uh, bucketing system or t-shirt sizing the but mostly we follow the fibonacci series which is uh, one two three five eight thirteen something like that right so you follow that concept why we do the estimation so we could get to know what is the complexity of user story right with respect to each other once you define the complexity of user story after that you create the task i mean let's suppose one user story has been finalized and your team has been accepted and one developer picks okay i will do the development for this user story one tester says okay i will do the testing for this user story so your developer and tester will come together and they will create the task related to that particular user story and now your developer will give the estimate that how much time i will take to complete this user story right by his previous experience or by assumption because of uh, that courtesy your developer tells that this much uh, time I will take for this uh, user story to complete. In the similar way, your tester or your software tester, whenever look at the user story, get an idea that what kind of a test case I will write, whether functional, non-functional, what level of a testing I will do, right? Which kind of a data I required, what kind of a complexity is there on the basis of that, your tester gives the estimate for test design for execution and defect as well right now let's suppose your developer has given 10 hours your tester has given 7 hours so 10 plus 7 is equal to 17 which means this user story will is going to take 17 hours to complete right now both the people will start working together individually as well because developer will do the development and in parallel your tester will create the test case now again which framework you are going to execute whether it is tdd that you are doing a pair programming and execution or you are following the btd or ATD approach whatever you want so before writing the test case you have to give the estimation hence your scrum master should get aware that how much time this user story is going to take to complete in this sprint right Neha? Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we give the estimation so they can know how many user story we can complete in one sprint. Yeah. You can say that, sort of. Any more? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. In sort of, you can say. The again, there. Different. Again, there, there are a few more concepts which works, like there is a capacity planning velocity, which 
uh, scrum master helps that how many user story a team can take in this uh, uh, sprint. That is a, some different concept which we use here. You were asking something else. Yeah, what is the difference in the poker and the pivoting series? What is the difference? Po it's a planning poker, right? There is no, yeah, uh, I will not say any difference. I mean, planning poker is something that you have a flash card in your hand, right? Like uh, Fibonacci series is uh, incremental way. I mean, uh, if you know the Fibonacci series, it starts from... Uh, one, three, uh, five, three. Sorry? One, one, three, five. They yeah, one, here. I mean, addition of last previous numbers, right? One, yeah. three, five, eight, 13. So you do the estimation. Planning poker is kind of a game where you distributed these Fibonacci series having the cards on which the numbers has been written. So this is a way of doing estimation of your user story. Got it? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. No problem. Any more question? Any of you? Uh, during the last sprint, say like integration testing is required. Uh, in that case, if there is any delay in the delivery from the development team or the uh, definition of ready for QA to start in mm. those cases, like how it is to be handled because the sprint time is defined, but there was delay. It might be from development or from some technical limitations. Mm. So what Good. estimates QA have provided, they have to achieve, but they are finding it tough. So in that case, that is the last case of the sprint. So how should uh, uh, the testing should be handled in this case? Correct. So Kiran, as a preventive action, one thing that... Uh... I mean, as an agile coach, how I'm going to handle this situation. One, that I always, like I have told you a few, uh, few minutes before, that you should do the integration since you're starting, right? So you could get aware that the previous sprint, the items are integrated correctly or not. One. Second, whenever there is a cap there is a planning for a sprint, so the capacity and velocity tells you that how much user story we can pick in this uh, sprint, right? So there should not be any kind of first surprising should come like, oh, we are not able to complete because of the extra load, right? That kind of a surprise should not come. Next, whenever the user story refinement is there, the definition of ready and done should be very strict and it should be very clear. Apart from that, the acceptance criteria should be very tightened and acceptance criteria, as we know, it is the contract between product owner and the team. They might be your product owner is pushing something but your team is not ready to take so it should be mutual agreement between product owner and the team and they should accept the user story once it has been accepted right the acceptance criteria now these three things if you are following the chances for such surprise is very less but again if, still if it is coming in that case as a software tester like you should be having a courage and raise it in a timely manner now it is product owner's responsibility whether to uh, increase one more sprint or can give some more time or can compromise with other user stories which are not very prior can stop on that or uh, can uh, mark some user story as a as a redundant and can uh, remove from your sprint right so these are some possibilities that can be done right Rest, if uh, I mean, not as a software tester, but as a developer also, we should raise it before alarming clock, right? It, it should not come at 11th hour. I'm going to raise the concern. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Kiran. Any more question? Okay, so I consider it as a no question here. And uh, I'm closing this session here. And uh, I will share the recording on YouTube for both the videos for today and for yesterday. And I will share the link in uh, in the same Chapal group where you can go and watch it. Pankaj, you have any question? Sir, what is velocity? <laughs> okay, velocity is nothing but you can say it's a number of user story that has been completed in particular sprint. Okay. Right? The user story points, rather, I should be very specific. The, the number of user story points that has been completed. I mean, the user story which has been completed. So every user story has some point that you need to add. And the sum is known as the velocity of particular sprint. So it is uh, calculated in percentage. No, no, not in percentage. Let's suppose, for example,
let's suppose in this sprint you have user story one which has a uh, uh, point is for example three one user story two has point uh, eight right one user story has point uh, sorry three which has point 13 one user story four which has point let's suppose one one user story which has point let's suppose two one user story let's suppose have point five has uh, again eight right let's suppose you have completed all six user story and it has been accepted but seventh you have not completed right so the velocity will be equal to five plus two plus one seven eight and thirteen how much it is twenty one plus eight twenty nine and three is total thirty two this will be known as a velocity of a sprint right so whatever the user story that has been completed so addition of total user story point will give you the velocity of that sprint okay got it right any more question any of you okay so it's 11 12 now and i'm going to close this session here if you have any question you can connect me separately as well and thank you so much for joining i hope i have helped you a little bit to understand the agile in software testing and believe me, the agile concept is very beautiful. Once you will learn the things, the task or whatever you are doing is very smooth, right? So welcome to the new world of agile. In case if any of you are planning for a uh, scrum master or for the product owner, please, you can connect. We have a very good session, right? On those uh, titles, you can say. And uh, so most of the time i have seen the scrum master majorly from a software testing background because they know the business they know the technical as well so most of the time the scrum master are from testing background right even the product owner comes from the testing background as well so you have very bright future in uh, agile and very good packages also where uh, the companies have very good in demand for scrum and, and product owner because companies are expanding in agile uh so i'm going to close this session thank you so much for joining have a wonderful time enjoy bye bye thanks thank you bye thank you, you sir bye thank you.